balance of the game. We're going to see some push. We're going to see a ton of team fights. We might even go to a 40, 50 minute late game. So I think we Prepare have it all. And that's a great game one, right? You, you want to yes. see it all. And I think this is going to be it. Yeah. Looks like nobody to do any level one smoke. The only aggressive move is ROTK. Looks like he's straight up TP to the bottom. This is going to be a very expensive ward, but he's going to get one down without the enemy team having any vision. This, this, I think, is really important for it. I was actually looking at the Lone Druid pickup as the last one and thinking, okay, you look at the lineup from Nubi now. They could run easily an aggro tri lane with the Live still in the front lines, Ancient Apparition as well as Lion right behind him. They could cause a lot of havoc up on that top lane. So the bear becomes a bit of a filter up on that top lane, then combining it up with FY as well as Fender is control power. They should be able to survive that top lane. If you had any other hero which has to come to the front lines to farm or be involved, you'd be finding yourselves in a really, really risky position where you could give away first blood. So they basically have to the top lane as far as like balance goes, as long as they don't get caught out of position. They look towards the bottom lane. You get this nice, really aggressive ward. It blocks the pull point, so there's no secondary option if the top lane goes bad for newbie, unless they come down here with sentry wards. But more importantly, it keeps an eye out for what xiaowei has got planned with his little treants as well. So ROTK or Super. It just looks like they're switching around the... Uh, they're switching, no. They're actually just handing over some sentry wards. Um, but it will be ROTK on the off lane, trying to get a good start, and Super the will be there begins. in the middle lane. Toby, sounds like you like Vici's lanes. Elite, or I, I'm loving Vici's lanes. I really think the lone drill pick up as the last one was a really smart idea. The only thing that could bite him in the butt is when the live sealer gets really, really big. As uh, Mad was saying, the, the bear is just going to get devoured by that live stealer. They cannot let that live stealer have room. They're going to look at early Maelstrom, Basher on that bear, and really get up in the face there of Newbie. Yeah, I think farming on the top lane is going to be quite difficult for Vici Gaming. With that said, though, Silar is working with essentially two heroes, so he, his lasted damage is very high. Should he get out of position, the Earthshaker figure is going to bail him out. So let's see who's going to actually get the first kill here. I imagine it's going to go towards the side of Newbie, but how defensive can Vichy get? Man, they're going to be so defensive. The problem is they've got no camps to pull. They need to get rid of these sentry wards. But to do that, they have to basically contest up against Sunsheng as well as Banana. And that's not going to be an easy thing. FY, surprisingly for his first ability, he goes in for the for the shock. So he's just going to try and push Hal out, out of the lane and the Fissure spam as well. I get a feeling they're burning through a lot of clarities just to try and get these newbie supports to burn through consumables. Because what they really bring towards this top lane, everyone's got a set of tangos and there's a salve there. But that's basically all she wrote. So if you get these guys low enough, then it's going to be really risky for Nubi to try and dive underneath, either be it a tier 1 tower, or go deeper inside the VG Gaming jungle. What's, what's worth, they're actually farming quite okay on the top lane. Silar is getting up to the creeps, and that's kind of what you're looking for. The trap from the Fissure, not going to be there. Yeah, they're just completely throwing out nukes left and right and trying to out-harass them. There is a smoke of the seat for VG Gaming support, and with the Earthshaker, you always have a shot to actually go gank mid. And I think the key thing right now is they finally found that sentry. They will be able to deward it. They will be able to pull at minute two, and uh, that should help Vichy's defensive trial lane a little bit better. Yeah. Another lane we should probably mark is uh, middle lane. Super already cracking his 10 CS, and finally is his bottle coming out because he bought the stout shield. It took a little bit longer than uh, it took for Moo. Who's uh, playing there as the outlet for Hello Top Lane? That's a real bad position right now for Banana. Gets it something Sila. He's going to cut his way out there. There's no First tangos. How's trying to help him out? He's locked in the corner. First blood. Goes away a PG game. Was not over yet. FY still in the tree line. Profit. He's actually going to come into this fight. Jal Wade wants to turn the tides of this fight. And Fenrir now on the run. Chilling Touch is on cooldown. Cold Feet is available now, but we will see Sila and Fenrir back up. So it was a 1 1 trade, but Jal Wade, he had to TP in and then uses a scroll to get back straight to bottom lane. They don't want to miss any CS. Down here. Very surprised that Xiaowei actually TP in without having access to Sprout. So he essentially teleported in and added two or three right clicks. Got the kill though, got the experience, and that's the key. He's now go to, going back to the bottom lane. I'm not seeing it as a huge win, especially when this is happening on bottom lane. Slow movement is going to be perfect. And this is going to set up now. Alchemist will die in the middle lane, but Xiao Wei locked inside the cogs with the shackles and the shock of the battery assault rocket. It's actually not even battery assault, it was just plain rocket. They get themselves the kill. And the Alchemist, in the meantime, he's actually soloed up by a DD Brewmaster in the mid lane. So VG Gaming are now sitting at a 3 1 advantage three minutes in. Very, very good movement coming out from VG early game, especially that gank on the bottom lane. Not 
not only did they get the kill, you gotta keep in mind that FY is playing a hero that really needs to reach level 6. So getting any kills like that, especially when you only like a 2v1 situation, the experience share is very going uh, in the favor of Vichy Gaming. And let's see if they continue this aggressive movement. No, FY, yeah. he's gonna find Shang Shen. Oh. He does have the boots advantage, but ROTK is very far away. <laughs> Don't think they're really gonna get the kill. I say that though, <laughs> there is no boots on Shang Shen. He can he, keep chasing this. He's the right click this. of Shadow Shaman. He needs two more attacks at least to get Sun Sheng oh. down, but he can't reach him. And there's not enough mana for a shock. Not at this point, but you're realizing just how powerful that rocket can be also early on. RTK actually favoring the rocket over the battery assault, even though if he does manage to catch Zhao Wei inside a cogs, high level battery assault will be an instant kill on that profit. Yeah, what newbie is looking for right now is to stabilize the lane. The first step is having how to finish that phase boots. Once you have the phase boot finish, you're essentially immune. Mid lane, it's gonna be a lot of trade off here and there. It looks like two heroes running to the rune at top. Nobody finds it. Super comes in and clap. Looks like he's gonna threaten the kill. He's gonna get a crit. He's actually gonna oh, he split. Splits. That's gonna be a kill if the dragon doesn't deny it. The dragon, they're just sitting there and they're not denying. That the dragons are too slow. That last little walkover, the dragons nurse at the last moment. Now up on top lane, Fissure on Hal. But there's rotation support coming over from the lion. And Hal underneath his own tier one tower is going to be okay. Meanwhile, we... bottom lane, ROTK invis up, and there's going to be support coming in from FY. Right next Easy. to him, just Easy the come. And here comes FY, he's going to do a ton of damage with that Ether Shock. Where's the Shackle? He's not using it. There, there you go. Finally, Shackle. ROTK will pick up the kill. And the important experience and levels are coming in. ROTK hitting level 6, so he can start rotating around. That's going to free up the lane for FY to actually sit here and get more experience. Man, this movement from VG Gaming is brilliant. And super, like, knowing how far he can push it up against Mu, realizing an Alchemist is literally acid spray and a concoction. He's got nothing else to really try and stop a Brewmaster. And when Brewmaster splits, there is actually nothing that stops him. You have to tank it all up, and he's not level 6 yet. So there's no chemical rage to try and protect this Alchemist. He's very, very weak at this stage of the game. This gank has to work. The one big difference between the two supports of, of both teams is that Banana and Shen Shen, they play much more defensive than FY and Finrear. So you can see that FY is, you know, essentially ganking multiple lanes multiple times, whereas the newbie supports are kind of hanging out on the top lane. And that's really just a different play style of the two teams' supports. But that really is uh, making a big deal. Obviously, we see ROTK is doing such a good job on the bottom lane, now almost hitting level 7. I wonder when he's actually going to make his first rotation in gank. Well, I got a feeling he'll TP top in just a couple of moments time, because Sila, well, he actually just resummoned his best. This would be a big kill if they can claim it, but the Vortex goes down, which means Sila knows the Sunshine and Banana are hanging inside the tree line, while in middle lane, Moog, he actually popped off his chemical rage right now, but FY, the Fissure, he needs to get in range for the Shackles, and here it comes, FY, he's still not there, now Moog throws down the stun, double stun with a rocket from ROTK, comes all the way from the bottom lane to get the kill, super diving in deep, there is no split, 20 seconds on cooldown, but Sunshine held inside the Shackles as well, towed himself, there's enough with the clap, the super Caught inside the sprout, taking a large amount of damage from the T1 tower, but he will back up to his side of the river, and not only that, he's going to pick up the illusion rune. Top lane though, Silar in a lot of Ooh. trouble. He's trying to run away really quickly. There's Heal. nature on how Maybe. one more hit. The wrath of nature is going to come through and get the kill. And again, any kill going to the support on newbie side is going to be huge as well. If you look at their item progression, there is none. Banana sitting at 500 gold, so he's going to get the boots. And it looks like Shanshan, no, Shanshan has no boots. This is a problem. When you're trying to assist and teleport to the safe lanes and the mid lanes to help your other players, having that mobility and having the mana to TP in is huge. And right now, these supports are very underleveled. They're very underfarmed. And it's hard to make a recovery in the early game when your supports can't make those plays. Super, he's not going to go again. He does have split available and he's watching Moo here in the middle lane, but needs more damage, especially going up against a Chemical Rage Alchemist, not that great. Fenrir is also watching the top lane, Sila. He's still fighting without a bear. This is his massive problem right now. 50 seconds until he can have the potential and tangle back up again. So Fenrir has to sit here and basically babysit Sila so Sila doesn't fall behind in the farm. This is the most important thing for him right now. If this was a boxing fight, I feel like it's Newbie that's really cowering. They're, they, they took a really big rifle. Look at Mu on the mid lane. He has a Bracer and Alchemist. He's simply afraid. Oh. The Hulk's going to come in right now. The Cog's going to be ready. Mu's going to charge up his stun, but I'm not sure if it's going to make it out there. The tower is helping out. Tower Aggro gets shifted, and now the split's going to come out. Mu's going to try to run away from the rest of the team. He's going to go down as a result. That Bracer did not save him. You do not get Bracers on Alchemist simply because you don't really need it in normal games. It seems like he's just really afraid of the rotation of Vichy, and rightfully so, because they are 8-2. and two. 
What also, lead. what also really hurt him was the fact that Banana, he, only could, he could only get one person on that Impale. And because of that, we still saw ROTK freely move around. Another rotation from VG Gaming, and ROTK coming from the angle, which you'll be least expecting. He literally just hooked in from, like, the ancient area on the top lane for a hero who's been on the bottom lane the entire time. Now, how he got entangled up, and that may be enough time holding him there. If they get another entangle here, he's going to see Infest out already. He may be regretting that one right now. He's already used his Rage, but no TP coming off the back of his Still got four one charge of super. Well, he's looking for some kind of extra crit. Diving under here. He's got Ace Rune available, so Open Wound's not going to stop him here. Clap one second away, and one that'll be the one. kill for the clap. Oh. How's out of range? Radiance and now Super. He's in too deep. The creep wave is blocking me in the corner. He's trying to find a way out, but no man out of movement speed is going to save him from that. Can't hide inside the tree line. Xiao Wei again TPing in to help out for another kill to try and get Nubi back in advantage of this game. Great bait from Hao and great rotation. They got a lot out of that fight. Experience is going to be the key. But speaking of experience, look at the bottom lane. FY hits level six, and that's that means your towers are going to go down if, if it's Nubi. So I imagine FY is either going to just push bottom straight up or he's going to go for a gank Dyer's on another lane and then push afterwards. Mass Serpent Wards is going to be the name of this entire series. Look towards Shadow Shaman doing a lot of work for both teams. He might be in a little bit trouble right now though. So yeah, Sunshine's coming over and there's TP coming in from Hal. They want to get him out. TP, well they don't Great have a stun. TP. There's no stuns. Great TP. It's actually a major, major problem here for the newbie lineup. Like on the third pick, they went for the lineup. Thought, okay, we need suns, we need hexes, we need something along this line because none of our other heroes really offer this. And until you get like Abyssal Blade over on Hal or something like either Scythe, which actually no, we're not getting out from Xiao Wei, he's going Fades Boots into the Necro Book build instead. I so mean, you have the Lion, them. and then you also have the Alchemist. They, they offer True. some early game stun, but unfortunately, neither of them were there. Normally, you don't see those early Dyer's games TP too often because a support hero like FY will just die instantaneously. Mm -hmm. But he just reacted very quickly, and that's why he made it out there. So great play from FY. And, uh, you know, as Matt said on the analyst booth, one of the best support players in the world, if not the best. I love watching him play, man. And now VG Gaming, Dyer's they push themselves up towards the top attack. lane. So smoke movement came out from both FY as well as ROTK. But with no one up here, they just attack. forced the tower. Silas already got that, uh, that high level bear, fortified. so demolishes up on the bear, Dyer's and they just melt through the tower as well. On the bottom attack. lane, Xiao Wei and Hal, they're both looking for the trade-off. So a tier one for a tier one tower trade. VG Gaming will be happy with this. They obviously won't be ecstatic, but actually, are they going to come back Dyer's and try and defend this? ROTK is moving into a position for a hook shot, but well, Hal's still here. He's hanging around a little bit longer, but he's out of range of the hook shot, so he's okay for now. Looks like both teams have successfully defended a tower. I think actually Vichy Gaming wants to trade, and they will want to keep trading until that Lone Druid hits up to 3,800 gold, and we haven't really looked at his gold count. 2,200 right now, once Radiance comes online, can you imagine the squishy supports on newbie side just getting run down by that Radiance Bear? Ancient Apparition Dyer's as well as Lion. What do denied. they actually do when a Raging Bear charges at you? Do you still actually want to go for the Radiance Bear? Considering, like, okay, Lone Druid's still meant to be there to control up the life stealer. If you go for Radiance, this is going to put you back on your Basha. It's going to put you back on your extra control abilities on that life steal. I think the fact that you could get it so early is, is a key because if he wants Hannah Midas, he already has a gold and could have bought it for now. And if he wants Maelstrom, he also could buy the parts. So the fact that he's not buying anything, I imagine it's going to be a Radiance. And it's one of those items, the earlier you pick it up, the more effective it will be. And this is a great Radiance timing coming off from Silent. Super's looking for an opening with this with this fresh blink dagger of his. He's looking at Hal on the bottom lane, and with support from ROTK, they could have possibly got a kill. But there's an observed ward on this bottom lane that's really working overtime. This guy right here has watched so many rotations from VG Gaming that. Well, they just keep getting sprung, and Nubi just back themselves up, and they fight in what's the safest place they possibly can. And for Hal, that's right under his tier one tower. They are avoiding fights thanks to those wards, but it's it's a decent goalie for Vici Gaming right now because they have the Shadow Shaman and the Roshan advantage. They could easily sneak into the pit whenever they want and then just steal it. So. I feel like Vici still has a better position oh. in this game. Move. Be careful how long you hang around here. ROTK is moving up. We've even got Courier delivering in the Blaze of Attack with a Haste Rune. Mu is actually outrunning his own chesty Courier. But they'll, move, they'll look towards middle lane now. FY, we still haven't seen these Master Serpent Wars being committed. For the, for the nice fast level 6 that he got, FY has still been very, very cautious about using these Master Serpent Wards. 
I, I see it as anytime you save it, you can guarantee another another tower afterwards, or maybe even Roshan in this early stage of the game. It looks like he'll drop it right now for the mid lane, but hard to actually push this one here, because here comes everybody of newbie, and those wards are still getting farmed. Enria, up. he's looking for the fissure right now. Mu getting shocked up. The massive wards actually, yeah, most of them are already gone. Yeah. Alchemist just walked up, tanked Radiant's it up, and farmed it up. And that's generally why you don't drop oh, those massive rewards unless you really have forced the enemy heroes back. It was a really good asset spray. Just really made it difficult for Vichy Gaming Dyer's to commit. Bottom tower is Anytime attack. that super wants to jump in, Radiant's he can't. He really can't. Link dagger attack. clap into a split. There's really no good answer from newbie right now, apart from a good quick hex coming out from line. I'm surprised to see that Vichy Gaming wasn't as aggressive as they been so far in this game. Yeah. Now Vichy Gaming are coming off worse for the trade. Even Zhao Wei is being a real nuisance. Dyer's He's got this one little tree and taking the creep wave on a bit of a tourist trip down through the middle lane. And this is allowing the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane to take a lot of damage. Damage. Now, top lane VG Gaming are looking for some kind of counter initiation. So we've got smoke movement from ROTK as well as Fenrir again. But again, also, newbie not too far out of position. How is oh, the closest one? Is. And there goes your feature. Follow up hex, shackles as well. ROTK going to go for the battery. So they're trying to keep these guns up and locked here. And how? Well, he does have rage, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Shadow Shaman will finish the job right there. Fenrir did commit Echo Slam as well. I'm very surprised that he decided to fight that. He could have infested an enemy creep and just stood there and waited for the creep to come close to his tower. tower. Mm -hmm. Instead, he decided to rage in the open wounds and fight, and you can't fight everything there. So, perhaps a misplay coming up from Hal, and that's a key misplay because not only has he died as a carry, he also has lost a tier one tower. And speaking of that, the momentum is going towards Vichy Gaming. Look at the gold on Lone Druid. He's sitting at 3,700, just a little bit more to that relic. And then you're right, then the supports will be having a lot more problems. Oh, and another yeah. Fissure that just sets up perfectly. That range on the Fissure is just a perfect. Perfect initiator without having to put your support Radiant's to risk. You think Earthshaker, he's like a, he's a melee hero. Maybe he's not that great for harassing people out of lanes or setting up for things because he's not a range guy. But really, with that fissure, you can set anything up. Yeah, it just really feels like newbies aren't able to really execute a game plan. What they really want to do is have a fairly passive laning phase, make sure everybody's decently level on farm, and as the mid-game chaos happens, that's where you have Xiaowei coming in uh, with either a blink puck or a profit, or how really join a lot of fights. Right now, nobody's really initiating fights. They're losing essentially every single lane. My question for Newbie is, how are they going to start recovery? Oh, what items are they going to be at? Does he hook shot? Does he hook shot? No. Xiaowei just TP straight out. Yes, he heads towards the top lane to join Howl up here. Maybe they can add some pressure towards the tier 1 tower. But it was ROTK as Dyer's well as Super trying to rotate themselves around. Another thing we also haven't seen is, uh, like, Howl and Xiao Wei, they're on the same lane right now, but we actually haven't seen them combo either. Like, Infest inside Nature's Prophet is a one oh, mid lane. It's going to be Hook coming in. Moo's going to get you off. Shackled up, hit the cogs, with three heroes hitting him, and he's straight up dead. Dyer's Although the heals of the ultimate, attack. not going to be enough. No. That's still only a level one, it's not enough for him to really do much there. And uh, BG Gaming can now force the middle oh, lane, oh, top lane, uh, the middle lane going super, up and towards the high Dyer's ground. His blink is still on cooldown, and Banana very quick in the hex. Yeah, the disparity between the levels of support is just huge right now. Level A supports on BG Gaming, and level 5 supports on the side of the UV. They need level 6s so such that they could actually assist the team with the burst. They really need burst to have A brave team becoming a mid, what is this about? Uh, how? Uh, Slightly suicidal, shackles, fissures, hexes, and now the stuns. How goes down? Livesteal unable to survive. Brumas already let his split off, and he's going to move forward. The stun will go over off the Nana. Maybe send Sasha up and towards the air. They can actually turn what's one into two and potentially three. Another TP's on the way, and the Alchemist instantly pushed back. Echo slam. Vision going down. They're going to lose Alchemist. They're going to lose Sunshine as well. Super, the clap. There it is. Actually, just rolls him down. Triple kill for Super. And Newbie bringing the supports one by one and turning this game of Dota 2 into Duck Hunt. The scary thing is FY still has mass up reward. If they want to commit for a tier Radiance 3 push right now, they can. Uh, looks like they're going to go back and secure the safe Roshan. They had the full Radiance after that fight, man. They yeah. do not want to take any other risk. You take Roshan, you look to your outer towers, and you don't give Newbie any advantage to come back in this. This is the grand final with $5 million for first place. You take no risks if you don't have to. Also, look over to go to FY sitting at 2,700. He could go blink if you want. I actually think an Agony Scepter would be excellent in this game. You just want tanky. You just want to put down bigger and, and more awesome wards. And I think he's going to go for that. At the same time, the point that you can also understand that with ROTK jumping in like he did with this hookshot, you need abilities to keep up with him. So, yeah. so I think having another way to jump in and shut down that life slur is going to be excellent. It looks like we see a gank up top. It's going to be a TP bomb coming in. 
There's the call. There's the call. Straight up dead. And that's what they need to keep on doing. Get these pick off. It's going to come in in a very expensive trade of a Roshan, but it wasn't like Newbie's going to defend the Roshan anyway, so might as well do something else. It looks like they, we are going to see a Boing Dagger coming out of FY. Yeah, he's got to keep up with it. It's, it's actually kind of funny that uh, the Seb was talking about this over on the panel. It's the fact that you have. VG Gaming, it was so good initiating. They know how to play up against Nature's Prophet. When they played that EMS One Finals, they were using Stormspur as well as the uh, as well as the Clockwork in combination, having these long jumps in with just two heroes, and they'd always be there to back up one other, each other. So you jump yourself in, and you always got a teammate right behind you to follow up with a hex, follow up with a control, follow up with some burst damage, and that's exactly what you get with the Blink Dagger over on the Shadow Shaman, the range from the Earthshaker. Soon Fenrir will also complete his own Fissure, so that's another hero that can go with the Clockwork. Brewmaster's already going with him in the Blink Dagger, and Lone Druid, well, he's got his bear on the front line, so he's kind of always there. Yeah, I wonder how Newbie's going to defend the push that's going to be coming their way. They have a couple of tools. They have Athlas Spray coming out for Mu. That's going to weaken the push. They have things like Wrath of Nature as well as Ice Blast. I say that, though. Look at Shanshan's level. He's still at level 6. Where's that level 6? Not there, man. At least Lions managed to crack level 6, but uh, that's all Radiant's they've really got. They've put everything else they've attack. got into... Prophet, Live Stealer, as well as Alchemist, all at level 11. But even then, they're behind the Radiant's Brewmaster, who's level 13, teeping back towards middle lane super, trying to force out as well as this little army of weird triggants to stop them from pushing into that tier 1 tower in the mid lane. But in the meantime too, VG Gaming, they're forcing the bottom lane out. So all tier 1 towers are gone for Newbie, the tier 2 towers go on the middle lane, and VG Gaming are looking to add a lot more pressure towards this bottom lane. And Mu, Chemical Rage will protect him a little bit from the Radiance right now, but that's all she wrote. He needs the mech up and running. Oh, RTK. RTK is looking for it. He misses the hook. Radiance bottom mm. tower. You fire one, you miss one, but they're going to guarantee themselves a tier 2 tower because it looks like Newbie is not even trying to defend this. The Silo just lost his bear. He didn't want to have that happen. The Ice Blast actually connected on him. He was taking too much damage from the tower. So the bear in, in the end ended up shattering there. We've got the top tier 2 tower being forced. Hal, Fenrir. Uh, he's actually getting mana burned at the back line, so just letting off an easy fissure is not as simple as you'd hope. But Lone Druid already took the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane, so Silo just defends and soaks up the experience and gold. VG Gaming completely in control of this game. They're doing whatever they want. They're pushing every tower. They're defending the towers that they care about the most. And their supports are picking up so much farm. I don't know how Newbie's going to make a comeback. How are they going to begin a comeback? I think it has to really come through with those uh, life stealer bombs again. Yep. Maybe a little bit more high priority targets. You really can't do it against a, a life or sorry, you can't do it against an Earthshaker anymore. You can't do it against a Shadow Shaman anymore because they could both blink away. Mm -hmm. So maybe, and obviously that applies to Brewmaster as well. Maybe just try to find that Lone Druid and kill him a couple of times. But if they're going to do that, they need better vision than this. And it might also be a, a note for VG Gaming to think about having a gem at round this time. Because if you're thinking from Newbie, like you're ahead, you could probably have a nice gem carry which shouldn't be able to die. You've got a lot of strength heroes, which are very, very fat to do such a thing. Uh, but main thing is just making sure VG Game, uh, Newbie doesn't see you moving across the map, so you can't have a good position live still bot. You have to guess where you're going. And if you're guessing where you're TPing with Nature's Prophet, that's when things go horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, it's also the fact that you could, for example, see the Lone Druid up top and maybe just teleport there, but you don't know where his teammate is. You don't want to teleport in and suddenly eat a, a big dunk from the Earthshaker. So having the vision is necessary, but there's some coming points. high ground. Their supports just don't have the gold, and well, scratch that. How yep. do you defend your high ground now? Master more committed, and the bear is just mauling away. And that bear's got a high in the back, but it's attacking my nice of cards. Now he comes to RTK. The cogs are going to split up Newbie, and the Brewmaster splits already gone. They hold Moo in position, and they're trying to focus down How He's looking for an arm to trouble. The Infest inside the Alchemist. Time. They send him up, but they're going to bring him back down again. They're trying to buy time for RTK. Now How jumps out. He's just getting stunned up while he's outside, too. He's slow low with my Brewmaster. He's able to pick up the kill, Finger of Death. Return kill into RTK. The tower is still not down yet, but the map seven was haven't even really been touched. The stun into Super Sila. He's very trying to finish the job. Fenry, he's wide on top of Xiao Wei, finishes the job. The tier three tower is down as well for Banana. Double kill the Necro units. It's actually body blocking up Sila a little bit, keeping him inside the answer spray. It was up to get the kill, and now FY blinks in with Super. Very quick execution to kill off Lion. And Banana. I splashed. That's a hit on Bang! Aegis is going to be removed. He still has to get alive. The bear is still alive. That's a critical game. Moose going to stun himself. No, he throws out Super. He's going to be fine. The Radius is burning him down. They've held us hit on two as well. But this bear is just running rampage in the Radiant base. They cannot hold the bear Another back. Entangle. The mech's going to fly off. Moose. Wow, he's dead. Yeah, and Sunshade's probably going to follow the moment already. He has to back himself out. How? Very aggressive TP. Sila trying to get out and successfully does so. There were no stuns left. VG Gaming, they're going to pick up a couple more kills. They're lone through a killing off Lion again. 
And also the buybacks coming out during that engagement. You managed to actually force one out from both Xiao Wei as well as one out from the Lion. This is not what Banana wanted to have to do as a support hero. On the bright side for Nubi, it was only the melee racks that was being attacked. So this is going to regenerate. So technically all the damage which VG Gaming did just then, it's gonna, well, it's only gonna take a couple of minutes before it regenerates back up again, but it's gonna be almost useless, like it never, it never happened. Yeah, the building damage, it's gonna regen. I, I see that point, but it's more that the economic damage is really a huge goal swing. If you look at the goal graph, we're seeing a 12,000 goal lead. Yep. More importantly, that goal lead has transitioned into some huge item pickup. For example, the Spirit Bear just picked up the Assault Grass. That's gonna give armor to the team and remove the armor from the building. Vlad's doing essentially the same, more armor buff to Vichy Gaming. And I think all the damage essentially is coming out from the life stealer right now and those two necro books. And they don't do well when the enemy have a ton of armor. I see the next push being a lot more lopsided than the successful defense, sort of, for Nibi just now. Well, it looks like the push is coming right now. Super Sonic's way with a DD rune inside the bottle and an Aghanim Scepter freshly on that Brewmaster. So he's also got, like, it's a level 2 Aghanim split. ROTK, he's got a lot of life points with that Mech Force stuff as well as Point Booster. He also has double damage. Yep, yep. That's gonna... That's By gonna... the way, Earthshaker missed an Echo Slam in that last fight because he ran into the Acid Spray and then, you know, did I get cancelled? Fimmer is not going to make that mistake oh, again. Looking for the stun on ROTK. Look how far out he's coming. He's so far out. The Hex from the high ground from Ben White. That's the more still here. And the Fisher blocking Hao in with the Cox as well. This is not where he wants to be, especially ROTK. He can't oh. get out of here. Someone falls up this man out. Six seconds still left. Cool down. Hex is just done. Hex has still not been used. And now it does. Massive points are there. We'll watch the Infest go out from the Life Dealer. He's protected inside the Dire Group. Now he pops back out again. But it's Urshaker for the Ancient Apparition. And ROTK chasing down Banana, the blink out from FY, and the finish off the escaping well, Lion. Huge play though, coming out from Newbie, they force out the Master Board outside their base, smart to take a fight outside because the Master Board isn't shooting a building, but uh, uh, smart play is the one thing, but the, the raw power of BG Gaming just oh, FY. the blink initiation, oh. ow, he's gonna be dead, bursted down here by BG Gaming, the Shackle's gonna come to the moon, coming down to him, he traces his life support to support Shadow Shaman, GG. who's gonna stop the bear, nobody will! GG comes out for Vici, and they take game one. That was perfect from Vici. They realized just how far they could push it. Massive force was down here, but that bear was so powerful with Radius as well as Sokuras working their way through the Raxus was going to be so easy for them. And they just kept finding heroes and they kept finding entangles as well. Mu tried to be really aggressive, going back in with a concoction stun, but he got entangled up, locked in position, and all of a sudden they're just losing hero after hero after hero after hero. And it was like, Newbie would actually.